Hey, what's up, guys? We're back at again to try to push the top of Clash Royale. I haven't played this game in a few days, and as you can see, we have not really been at a very high rank because I haven't played Clash Royale. So I hopped on yesterday, and I decided, let's see how many games I can win in a row. I did lose one of the first few games, <laughs> but then uh, I ended up winning one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I was looking at it, I was like, why not just do the rest of it on stream, right? Like, I'm gonna push up anyway, I'm gonna win a lot of games, might as well show you one of my favorite decks and also practice and regain our footing on stream and get better together. That's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna go and push up to the highest point on ladder that we can today in a couple hours and see how far we can get. I feel like there's gonna be a nice experience for a lot of people that are trying to push up mid ladder, not necessarily knowing what they're playing against. And it also shows what deck I like to play at the end of the season. So, you know, it's kind of just telegraphing all the secrets, you know? Anyway. Jumping to the business, uh, this deck that I'm currently playing is extremely good in a lot of situations. It's just a super safe deck. The reason why we're running Cannoneer is because you have fast cycle cards that allow you to adapt and crush cards that are annoying, right? Like if you're playing against Graveyard, well, you're going to be able to kill it with guards or minions or even poison. So do you need to end up having the Princess Tower? Not really. You could run Princess Tower with this deck. But at the highest level of gameplay, I was talking to pro players, and they told me that universally, this Cannoneer is actually better in most situations with this specific deck. However, the only two situations that you do not want to be playing Cannoneer are playing against Bridge Bam, because you don't necessarily have as many good answers, because guess what? They're going to have recruits, they're going to be spamming a lot of stuff that are annoying. That's going to be obnoxious. And then the last one is going to be a person that decides to run Graveyard. Still, like, you can counter Graveyard, you can still be Bridge Bam with this deck, but those are less likely to uh, be victories for you than the other matchups. So I just want to uh, set that straight for you guys and tell you guys what's up. Jake, love your haircut. Yeah, my haircut kind of looks scuffed right now. I just woke up. <laughs> I did get a haircut though. Thank you, man. Appreciate you noticing. Um, sometimes when I just wake up and I'm like, yeah, let's go play some Clash Royale. I decide to go click live and not really care about how I look, which is something that maybe I should uh, do. But it's okay. You guys know what's up. You guys understand how we are. Uh, we're gonna go in for a little Prince ability here, and I think that we could go in for a decent defense. Yeah, I think I'm not gonna spend anything else. I think this is totally fine. We should be able to get a Mortar down as long as this Lumberjack doesn't hurt me. We're fine. And then he's gonna use Musketeer, of course. Musketeer does die. Right? Little Prince might lock tower. No, nah, it doesn't. That was a great defense from our opponent. I guess he did outplay us a little bit, so we'll get him well played. Uh, genuinely, like, I do think he played a little bit better than me there. It's fine, though. We, uh, we're just going to cycle back to another Mortar, and we should be standing on business here. We can go in for an Ice Spear, we can go in for a Miner, and then Minions. This Miner placement is typically bad, because they can Snowball to activate King Tower. I just don't think he will, since he has a Lumberjack. Oh, he missed one. That's huge. And we can kill the Musketeer with the Poison, but probably not worth it. So I'm just going to go in. Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, guys. Are we witnessing what the same the same game here? Does this guy actually have a Hog Rider with the Musketeer? I mean... This is mid-ladder. This is what I was telling you guys. Like, I don't know what these people are playing. Like, we're at 9,000 in the world. This is exactly what everyone tells me. Like, I can't win against these decks because I don't know what I'm playing against, Jake. But in reality, like, I guess you can still, uh, you can still finesse it. You just have to play really well. All right, so we're going to log so it does kill the Musketeer. That is well worth it. So then uh, we can kill Lumberjack, Ice Spirit Miner. This is a snowball for him waiting to happen. So hopefully he doesn't do that. He goes in for Skeletons. That's fine. Just snowball and activate King Tower later. Oh, no, he doesn't. He messed up. All right, he's going to try to go Musketeer, I think. So let's go Guards. Preemptively Poison on it. Well, not really preemptive. That was a, that was uh, just a blatant lie to you guys. That was not a preemptive Poison. <laughs> we wish. Anyway, the Miner's going to be tanking for the Goblin. So that's Gobs of Damage. Oh my gosh, another one. Well, as you can see, even if you match into someone with a crazy deck with Hog Rider and Balloon, you can still beat them. <laughs> oh man, that's, uh, that is truly uh, the game of all time. Truly the game of all time. So, as you can see, this guy actually finished 3,000 in the world with that deck somehow. I don't understand how, but this is his deck. There is a Hog Rider and Balloon in the exact same deck, so that is amazing. And that propels our win streak to nine in a row. Let's see how far we can go, and let's see how high we can hit today. So, hopefully you guys are soaking in the, the gameplay and the cool decks that we are playing against. <laughs> it's a vibe. Do you feel like January went by really slow or fast? Oh, definitely super fast, man. Uh, what time are you hitting the, J the, the gym, Jakey Poo? Uh, dude, I'm hitting the gym right after this. And then I'm going to go on a jump on a business call with uh, Tribe. So that's the, uh, that's the game plan for today. I've been kind of just chilling a lot more at home. Um, I've been going out places to shop sometimes, but 
the most part, I've been chilling at home and uh, working out a lot. And uh, I, I gave a lot, man. I gave like 16 pounds. So that's that's a huge W for me. I was very twiggy and now I actually have muscle, which is cool, cool concept. By the way, squatting is awful. I don't know how any of you guys do that. It is awful. It is so hard. That is like my least favorite exercise for sure. Uh, afterward, your, your, your body's just like sitting down and you're like, I'm in pain. What are you doing today, Jake? That's literally it. And it's like nothing because you're in pain. Just kidding. I still go to the gym regardless. Um, creatine helps a lot with recovery. And then also like, uh, I guess I just shouldn't have went as hard, uh, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> anyway, we are playing against a, a devoted Elixir Golden player from the light of glory. So uh, this guy is a certified savage for sure. I have to Ice Spirit to go and pull back the Night Witch. This Ice Spirit timing actually makes a lot more of a deal. Because if you don't hit all the bats, it takes forever to kill the Night Witch bats. Because your your tar tower targets so slowly. That Ice Spirit was necessary to be, like, perfect. Okay, so yeah, this is, like, going to be a primary matchup that you do not want to be playing against. At least pre preliminarily, I do not like being able to play against someone that has, you know, this type of deck. If someone is going to be playing a Bridge Bam deck, again, as I said before, especially with Recruits, it is not an amazing matchup. But luckily, he is an Elixir Golem player, so he doesn't necessarily know how to drop his cards correctly. So there is that. That is pretty funny. I'm not going to fib. I do enjoy that. I do enjoy the fact that he is an Elixir Golem player. So we're going to go in for a log, and we're probably going to win this game. Leg Day isn't fun if you uh, can't slip with <laughs> Skip Leg Day. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude, I, I will never skip it. I like doing things that I don't like to do because at the end of the day, then you can be proud of yourself. So I know it's a weird thing to say. I like doing things that I don't like to do, but at the end of the day, you can look back at it and be like, damn, I did this. And that's a good feeling. Also, I'm messing up pretty hard, but it is what it is. I'm going to click the ability. Protect it, protect, protect. We'll go for a poison, and we will log on this if he drops the knight. Uh, that was uh, he's probably just not in a good... Ooh. Ooh, maybe he's got the moves. I hope not. I think the guards just kill everything. I think we're fine. I don't think this guy is playing very well. So, he deserved a loss. Okay, yes, you are going to fireball my King Tower and get out of the game real quick. So, we extend our win streak to 10 in a row. This was light work. This was not a challenge. As you can see, we kind of dominate mid-ladder very, very easily. We are a top 1,000 player. We're hoping to show you guys how to climb up a little bit quicker and uh, hopefully have a similar result in your guys' games. I haven't played Clash Royale in around three days, so what's up? Also, if you guys enjoy these live streams, if you enjoy me being transparent about my ladder pushing, if you guys enjoy me just screwing around, waking up and clicking live stream and being like, let's push up to top ladder, make sure to drop a like on the video. It goes a long way. It supports me for free. I'll be able to do more of these streams. And I do YouTube videos at 3 p.m. Eastern every single day or 12 p.m. PST every single day. So definitely subscribe there. Um, how much can you bench? I did three reps of 45s on each side. So that is what I, that's my current record of what I've done. Uh, I could probably do more than 45s, but I decided to just, you know, get my form down correct and, uh, feel good about that. You know, I think that you can easily hurt yourself at the gym if you're just screwing around, uh, or it's like ego lifting or whatever. So I try not to do that as much. Yo, 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 let's go, let's go. What time is it for you right now? It is 12, 21 p.m. All right, also, if you didn't know, Ice Spirit plus your tower just delete Little Prince. It destroys Archer Queens too. So I literally love the Cannoneer with this deck. It is so much fun to play. Especially because Cannoneer crushes beatdown decks and a lot of like lower ladder players will be running decks like this. They'll be playing like a Mega Knight randomly in the deck and just going to be spamming you. So it is a good experience to beat them. And uh, that's kind of what we're going with here. Because I assume if I am, uh, you know, a little bit better than the people that we're playing against, I kind of want to have advantages as well. So then the games are even easier. It's nice to have a double whammy. Being better and also having matchup advantage. I do, li I do like that. So, um, yeah, if this guy like overcommits and he goes into a Cannoneer, he kind of just loses everything. He might click an ability, but I think that's pretty bad. Maybe he'll do it since I did I Ice Spirit last time, but drop our Ice Spirit a little bit further. And yeah, can you just one taps it? I'm using your Goblin Giant Royal Recruit deck, but can't get to Ultimate Champion. Can you use it and give some tips, please? I can use it for a game and I can give you like advice on it. I, I will do that. Even though, um, you know, I was going to be planning on doing this the entire time, I will play one game with that Goblin Giant deck. It is a very easy deck to play, so. Um, I can explain it in one one game. It's uh, not that difficult. So, um, yeah, the, the premise of it is literally recruits every single time you can. 
Drop Goblin Giant when your opponent's down Elixir or when the recruits give you an opening. That is generally the strategy. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go for Little Prince in the back and see what this guy's going to do. The so Mega Knights, that's fine. I probably could click the ability here or Miner in the back for just like a defensive play. It's not a bad decision to do that, actually. It's extremely underrated in my opinion. Dropping a defensive Miner, it's very, very strong. We'll Ice Spirit here, we'll go for Minions, and then we'll go for a Mortar and play aggressive. Because we have the Miner tanky, this is actually quite good for us. The Bats are just going to die, so this is cool. We can just go for a Poison. I think that the Guards are um, not necessarily necessary here, we're totally fine. Should be able to kill the Bandit with just our Tower, hopefully. Okay, never mind, it's not going to target what we want. That's okay, that's fine. That's okay. Dropping Defensive Miner is, as again, I, I said, I said again, this is like a very underrated play, so I would uh, highly encourage you guys to start doing that. You haven't already. And we'll do it again. We should be fine here, I think. I might have to click the ability, which is kind of sad, but it is what it is. Alright, so that's all dead. Uh, then we go for minions on top of his little prince, and he might click the ability and be uh, not the best Mega Knight player, but unfortunately he's a little bit smarter than that. Slightly smarter, sir. Be well played, well played. Um, all right, I think that we are able to kill the bandit with that, and then that's kind of cool. I don't know if that happens, guaranteed, but if it would happen. Have to go guards in the middle and poison. We don't lose to these bats. A nuisance, not going to lie. It might wall breakers me. Maybe bandits is fine, as long as it doesn't kill my tower. <laughs> yeah, of course it hits my tower. Kind of losing the game a little bit right now from a standpoint of uh, 20 HP, but it's not that big of a deal. Mortar connects to the tower, so that's huge damage. Uh, he's got a Mega Knight here, so kind of bad guards to be honest, but it's fine. We're definitely going to have to poison those. Uh, I don't even know if they die. Okay, I guess I'm going to log. I just can't allow that to get damage. I should start throwing more miners at him, but it is what it is. I'm not going to drop any more aggressive mortars. Not not, not the wave today. <laughs> right, we're going to throw a... Uh, actually, I lied. I'm going to drop an aggressive mortar soon. Might as well with the uh, ability to do this. Oh, that actually hits, right? Oh yeah, we win. It's light work out here. Not really. This is a much harder game. I don't know why. Um, it's not like he was particularly good or anything. It's just like, it, I guess Mega Knight, because you don't have a mini tank. One of the difficulties of this matchup is using minor on defense. So a lot of people that are like not at higher levels will end up dropping like guards the entire time, like right in face of the Mega Knight. You want to drop your guards in the middle like I did. Because what happens is the Mega Knight will jump in the middle and then your towers will damage it down. But if you drop your guards right in front of the Mega Knight, the Mega Knight will just splash and kill everything. That was definitely decent. Um, yeah, he's 7,000 in the world. They're definitely a little bit better um, from a ranked perspective. So uh, we did win that quite comfortably. But um, yeah, it is it is still not an easy situation. All right, so the, uh, the Mega Knight... Sorry, not the Mega Knight deck. What was it? The Recruit Stack. This is the deck that you wanted tips on. So I will play one game with it. Uh, yeah, let's just run it. You just wake up? Yeah, I just woke up. <laughs> you guys really like the recruit stack. It's so easy. Being transparent is always best. Yes, sir. What we try to do out here. I'm going to go work out in an hour or so. Yo, dude, I hope you get a good gym session. Wow, good gym session. All right, this guy is likely going to be running a Lob Hound deck. So if we just recruits in the back, it's not a bad decision. I do enjoy dropping my recruits right here because it's going to be able to split up both sides. Get a lot of value. Barbarians are out of cycle, so I think I have a good opportunity to go for an Electro Giant. Uh, not Electro Giant, a Goblin Giant. We saw Electro Dragon, and I was like, Electro Giant! Uh, but yeah, no. we're going to run it like this. Uh, this might actually just win me the game. I don't think you can Tornado this. I think we're in a very good spot. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I think we do this, and we don't even try to activate King Tower because it's probably just going to lose the tower anyway. So I as well just pull the Elixir. Oh my gosh. All right, well, this is a weird game. I'm not going to lie, I don't know if I win this. But we're still going to try our hardest, obviously, because I don't want to throw the game. 
So we're gonna go in for our Little Prince off of the side. This is gonna be a bit more dynamic game because I don't think that this guy wants to defend his towers. I don't think he's in his religion to defend. I think he is in the creed of dropping everything he can at all points in time. Everything, uh, all everywhere, all at once. This guy has seen the movie. He, he's, a, he's a legend. Anyway, he's gonna Barbarians. Not anything I can do about that, but whatever. Uh, I think the Little Prince isn't one of the tower yet. Oh, it is. That kind of stuff. Kind of a dumb decision for me to put the ability here, but I'm gonna do it anyway. That ability is pretty trash. It's gonna do a lot of damage to the tower, but it's also a lot of elixir. And we don't kill the Night Witch. Awful. Okay, uh, I guess I have to go in for a rage here, and then we'll see if we can kill all this stuff with a fireball. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to fireball on all this. So kill it as fast as possible. Okay, not necessarily a good start for us. Uh, we're kind of in a bad spot. Of course, since I don't have a building, it is way harder to defend against Elixir Golem decks. That is part of the reason why I like running more skillful decks that, you know, have minor poison, that I, I wouldn't lose to this guy. It wouldn't even be close. Uh, but in this particular environment, when we do not have that, when we are also running the low skill strategy, sometimes low skill strategies are not necessarily adapted to defend against these decks. These minions can just kill the Electro Dragon, that'd be huge. I actually am so confused on what I'm supposed to do here. I am not enjoying it. I think the Fisherman was just a fail. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna throw this game and we'll go next. This is a very unfortunate situation where we kind of just got bridge spammed and we lost, but uh, if I was running around with Poison, we would not lost this game. Um, it happens, GG. Um, one of the weaknesses with this deck is, again, you don't necessarily have incredible answers to an abundance of bait cards. And what did this guy have looking at his deck? He had a Goblin Gang, a Night Witch, and also a Evolved Barbarians. That was a pretty bad matchup. It is winnable. It's just not ideal. We'll hopefully get a better game here. Also, Lord Grim, thank you for the, 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 the dono, dude. Really appreciate that. Um, thanks for the positivity and amazing content. You are part of my daily routine before I hit the sack. I was about to hear snack, and I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> thank you for making my day. I appreciate you uh, giving a, such a big dono and uh, being so nice, man. Appreciate it. Um, can you make a video just on your tips, like a compilation? I could, but I think that I try to have more fun with my content because I want to create content where... I mean, I actually do have a series. Um, the last one was a Samsung dedicated video, actually, but uh, for the most part, it's not dedicated or anything like that. And usually it's like a regular video you know so check it out there is a series top seven pro tips or tricks from sir tag there is that that you guys can check it out if you haven't already all right can we kill this maybe uh... <laughs> okay recruits i would love to not play against sparky in the back first play when i drop recruits in the back first play but you know this this is not going well so as you can see, at lower levels of gameplay, when people are not as good as us, we kind of prefer not to be running the recruit stack. Um, at higher levels of play, I can beat people much better than me, but I can also universally lose to people much worse than me. <laughs> so it is one of those things where it's like, if I drop recruits in the back first play, a lot of times it's going to be hard for me to defend against things because um, if, if my opponent has Sparky, uh, generally you want to be dropping your recruits directly on the Sparky. Unfortunately, that did not happen there. This is still a winnable environment, but obviously I would really like to not play against Elixir Golem with a lot of bait cards or Sparky with recruits. Those are two matchups that are very bad. Okay, we're kind of undoing a bit of our progress. So after this game, um, oh, I need to win one game with the deck, but after after I'm done with this, I am not going to be playing this. Uh, it is a very good deck. It's just a little bit more situational because again, it is a low skill deck. So low skill decks do not always have amazing matchups in every single situation. Sometimes when you're playing the low skill deck the right way, you will just lose because your opponent will also have a low skill deck and they'll spam stuff and then you're like, wait, I can't outplay it because the cost of my cards are too high, which is kind of an unfortunate reality. Um, I bet you he drops a Mother Witch here, so let's just go in for minions and fireball the Mother Witch and say that we are better than you, sir, please. Hopefully. Okay, not happening what we want, but whatever. Uh, let's go for this. I think that we're okay. I think I can just go Goblin if I wanted to, but I don't want to. Kind of okay, maybe. Sort of. We go goblins in the back and then we go in for a fireball on the mini P.E.K.K.A. Does that work? No, it's not. We're dead, actually. Unless this actually somehow does enough damage. I mean... 
Oh, uh, this is bad. He should just spam me. I think I lose. Lost. This is a very unfortunate loss because, again, I don't think I would lose to this guy. Well, I know I wouldn't lose to him if I was running the uh, Minor Poison deck, but again, um, I'll just show the weakness of like what happens sometimes. Is like You want to be using your recruits directly on the Sparky. There is a very limited amount of Sparky decks in the game, so obviously you do the high probability play that gives you an advantage in every matchup, dropping the recruits in the back first play. But sometimes you can get unlucky and you can get this. This is just bad RNG. In my opinion, this is just unlucky um, behavior. Like you recruits in the back and then they Sparky first play and then they're like, wow, I have a huge matchup advantage because guess what? I have a Sparky coming at you and you don't have your best answer to it. So of course he just kind of eats all the damage and left drops some other witch. That was a good play. Um, he did that intelligently, I guess, but I drop a goblins round and I just, I can't pick that. There's nothing, mechanically there's just nothing you can do. That kind of sucks. Um, and then this game, of course, like uh, the splash damage cards just aren't there available for me. Um, that is one of the weaknesses, again, with the deck, but I mean, you will win a lot of games with the deck as well. It is unlikely that you will end up uh, losing games a lot of times based off of Sparky in the back. We're just going to do the same play because it is the highest probability play. It is very unlikely that we match into a Sparky deck that has Sparky first cards and drops it in the back into our recruits. So I'm not going to like get discouraged by losing one game because of one interaction. You still do the same interaction. You go to the next one and uh, wow, we actually match into another Sparky player. But yeah, this guy, even though he's running Sparky, he did not have it in his starting hand. So, you know, this is... We, got, we kind of got unlucky in the one situation, but we did not get unlucky two times in a row because it's it's really hard to get unlucky two times in a row. It's it's really, 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 really hard to get that unlucky two times in a row. Um, but that is what it is. Um, so we're currently in a very advantageous position. We do have recruits here. I can go in for a Goblin Giant to go and pull back the Knight, which is definitely better because I want to hold my recruits since we've identified that he possibly has a Sparky deck. We're going to go for minions here as well because we are going to be able to destroy the Mini P.E.K.K.A. And then I think that the minions are going to give us a decent trade. But it's hilarious that we matched the same deck twice. Um, I'm just so thankful that he didn't have the version that was scary for me. Right, we're going to go for a Fisherman, I guess. And then I think it does kill all this stuff. So, ooh. I kind of forgot that that was a thing. That sucks. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we're kind of not okay here. Ah, the, the rage is pretty broken. Not going to lie. So I guess this guy played really well. Maybe? I, I I don't know. I think I might have just overcommitted into a Mother Witch. Um, anyway, we know that Mini Packer should be out of cycle, so he'll probably Sparky in the back. I do end up having recruits. I'm just down a bit of Elixir. I think going for a Goblin Giant when our opponent possibly goes Sparky would be a huge advantage for us. If he goes in for a Knight, it should just die. We're going to force a Fireball and Minion, so that's going to be solid 11 Elixir for our 8. So that's overall good, especially when he's counter pushing the wrong side. I think I can ignore that and go recruits at the river and then possibly just get a pretty good trade. I don't think he goes in for a Sparky right now. I don't think he can. Okay, he doesn't. I think he loses a lot of damage on left, though. Like, this is massive damage, actually. They're going to Fireball on that for more value. He loses the Sparky. See, that's why I said I don't think he would do that. But he did it. So, congratulations. He got a bad prize. We're going to do this. And we're going to go this. Eat that. Here, we'll click this. Going for this, and I think that we're going to be fine on defense. If the fisherman is intelligent, oh my goodness! Sometimes you're just wishing for a lot from a fisherman, but he uh, he did his he did his work. We're gonna go for the recruits here, and then I think we can rage depending on what happens. Um, probably not the play. I think we go for some spam on the other side, maybe. Going to lose. The minions. Rage it up and win because he did not play very well. Amazing. But yeah, this is one of those situations that you look at the game and you're like, <laughs> there was an opportunity <laughs> for Clash Royale to give us two Sparkies in the back two times in a row, but it did not happen. So, I, you know, screw it. I want to test fate and see if we can get a third Sparky player. I, I mean, it, it, statistical significance is over a, a wide array of games. So this is not statistically significant by any stretch of the imagination, but it would be pretty funny if we played against three recruits in a row. <laughs> sorry, sorry, three Sparkies in a row. That would be pretty absurd. That would be pretty absurd. I, I didn't want to play three games of this, but I kind of want to show. Again, we're, we're going to try to show what this deck is capable of in an actual game where we do not play against a low skill deck, where we play against like a Hog Rider deck or an Expo deck or anything that requires any semblance of intelligence. Like that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Because then it will show like how easy our deck is in comparison. But unfortunately, if we match into easy decks the entire time, 
There's really no comparison at all. Kind of unfortunate. So yeah, we just recruits in the back. Like it gives us a huge advantage. We're already in a very good spot. We can go for minions on the Dark Prince to kill it. Uh, he's gonna go Battle Ram, so I think we just pull it with a Fisherman here, and then we can go Goblins afterward, please? Oh, he's absent. Well, that was smart. I don't appreciate your intelligence here, sir. Oh no, this is actually not great. Now I have to go for a Little Prince. And his will probably kill mine, because his started attacking first. Oh, mine's still alive. Cool. I'm down a lot of Elixir, though. I mean, he did Zap, so I guess we're okay. But here's the thing. You don't click your ability when you have Recruits, because Recruits are broken. Why would you waste three Elixir when you could spend seven Elixir and get an Evolution? Always oh, drop evolutions. They're fun and balanced and very fair. But yeah, we're just going to recruit to the back. He's probably dead right now. I, I don't think that he's going to be uh, good enough to defend this very well, so he's probably just dead. <laughs> That's usually what happens. So we're going to go in for the recruits here. We're going for our minions if we want to, or we can go Goblin Giant. I'm actually just going to go and delve in with the Goblin Giant, and then we're going to go minions, and I don't think he defends us. He's going to have Pekka, so he is going to be able to defend, but he's still going to take a lot of damage. And the minions and the recruits are going to be able to pile on the pressure on the Pekka, and if he doesn't drop a small spell, he will actually lose the Pekka on his side of the map, because Pekka is a trash card that has no health and deserves a buff. But it is what it is. It do be that way sometimes. If he decides to go and click an ability or something, it would be funny, because we had Fisherman. He's probably going to go for nothing. I assume he'll just let it die, because nothing would make sense. Um, yeah. Uh, we could go recruits to the river if we wanted to, because why not? Herp Dirt, full skill. Uh, that is generally the dumbest thing in Clash Royale, but recruits in the back um, work. Recruits at the river work. Whatever you want to do works with this deck, if you are playing it at all with a brain cell. Um, not everyone plays it with a brain cell, but if you do play with a brain cell, you will win. Um, yeah, look, you did a lot of damage. Amazing. So he's got Pekka. It's still not very scary, because he loses the Dark Prince, does not get the damage. We go Little Prince here. Pull the P.E.K.K.A. We're going to go Goblins, and I think we're okay. I think we could have raged out, honestly, for more value, but ooh, this is actually slightly scary. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right, these minions aren't going to accomplish anything. I think I go Recruits in the back, build up more on the left, then Goblin Giant right. Uh, is he actually going to be Fireball value? I, I feel like that's probably not a play on his... Okay, he's going to do it. That's not very smart, is it? I'll take it, though. Appreciate the Goblins. The strategy here is very simple. You go Goblin Giant, and then you spend your stuff, and you win. This is it. This is GG. He lost. He did not play very well, and he deserved this L. He's going to Pekka right into this. It's going to get pulled by the Fisherman, and he loses. GG! Amazing. So as you guys can see, um, this deck is pretty easy to play, even into a Fisherman and Pekka deck. Kind of just use your recruits. You find opportunities. You drop a Goblin Giant at the river. You rage it, and you win. So, very, very easy deck. Um, I would advise you guys to play this um, over a long period of time. If you if you lose games, a lot of times you're going to lose based off of like dumb situations like this, where the guy doesn't really necessarily deserve to win. They kind of just drop the sparky, and then it's just RNG, and you lose. Um, if you play this deck correctly, like you will win way more games than you lose. Um, personally, for me, because I want to win every game when I'm at a lower rank, I would prefer to play a deck that is more so like this, where I I feel like. If you're the better player, you will generally win every single game. Um, that's that's what I like to do, um, personally. Not everyone does that. Uh, sometimes people don't feel very comfortable. Maybe you guys are trying to hit ultimate champion for the very first time. Oh, I just misclicked my mortar. Um, hopefully he doesn't know that. Okay, he doesn't know that. Cool. Um, but yeah, it, it, maybe you're not very comfortable. Uh, maybe you're just like trying to push up to ultimate champion for the very first time. Then maybe the recruits goblin giant deck would be the best deck for you. Or maybe your skill level is just a little bit lower. Maybe you're not very good mechanically. Uh, the Goblin Giant recruit stack is very, very good for that. If you are bad at the game, that is the best deck for you. Um, but yeah, that's uh, this is how it is. All right. Uh, how many calories are you eating? I don't know, man. I don't really uh, measure that stuff. I eat a lot, though. I have a very, 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 very big stomach capacity. Um, is top 200 in Canada good? Uh, it doesn't really matter what I think. It doesn't really matter what anyone says. The only thing that matters when you're thinking, is this good, is, is it better than where you were yesterday? Are you improving? Are you proud of yourself because you're looking at yourself and you're like, wow, I got a bit better at Clash Royale. Because no matter what, you could ask someone, you could ask Morton. Morton would be like, that's trash, basically. But not really say that because he's a nice person. But if Morton was top 200, he would think that's trash. So don't compare yourself to other people ever. Um, yeah, just be proud of yourself. See how far you can get. And uh, don't rely on others for, for validation. Uh, not a healthy mechanism of uh, anything. All right, we did not hit a Goblin Gang. That sucks. I thought he would Goblin Gang because it would make sense to drop a Goblin Gang because obviously the Mortar was targeting your tower, but I guess you didn't want to do that. 
Very cool. Um, anyway. We could minor on this. We could also go minions. I think dropping the mortar here, if he drops anything else, is ideal. But we do this, and... Ooh, wait. That's not good. Will the minions die? Uh, die to the ice goal, maybe? I, I don't know. I actually don't know this interaction. Kind of sucks, though. I don't I don't love this. I uh, probably have to Little Prince add ability if he goes for Royal Hogs, and he doesn't, thankfully. Appreciate you, sir. Oh, wait. Uh, I forgot that I have to respond to that. Aha, uh -huh, that's not very fun. Please don't Royal Hogs me. Okay, thanks for listening to me, buddy. I appreciate you. All right, he's definitely gonna go Goblin Gang, right? With that, so. Poison on it? Did it die? I hope, I hope so. I mean, I don't know if that poison was very smart at all. I think it was pretty stupid. But we take it! <laughs> it doesn't even matter. All right, wait, watch this, guys. Let's flex on him a little bit. Let's let's show him. Let's show him that we can finesse with a log on a goblin gang and predict his, predict his stuff. We're out of here. All right, we're going to go mortar in the same side that he's probably going to go in. We can go for uh, poison on the bats because we like not losing the bats. It's a fun experience having bats off into your tower, but not today. Not today, Satan. We're going for guards. Uh, he's not going to be able to kill those in time, so that's huge. We can log the princess if we want. Probably going for a mini pack of here. EDH. Yep. A log. Ice spirit here. Ooh. Am I standing on business or am I dead? I think I'm fine. Okay, let's play slightly more intelligently and maybe drop mortars on defense. <laughs> Here's a cool concept where you can minor poison out your opponent. Amazing. Okay, that is really annoying. Stop it. Who lets you do that? We get Ice Spear here. He's going to Fireball. Notice in my orientation of the Little Prince. It was definitely better to drop it there. Oh my gosh, guys. I have the Mortar. I have the power. All right, it's time to get after it with this log. That log was not getting after it too hard. That was bad, man. That one goblin, though? Gonna stop the princess? Wait, wait, do I? I actually have no idea what the hell is happening anymore. <laughs> All I know is I want to kill the princess. Stop it! Can I not lose this game? No, I'm gonna lose. Feels bad, man. Imagine losing? Couldn't be me. <laughs> That's a bad loss. That was a very, very bad loss. So the way I lost that was uh, getting overwhelmed by bait cards because I did not drop enough minor poisons. That's fine. Whatever you mess up, it is what it is. Jake is from Martha's Vineyard, but lives in Seattle. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I was. I mean, I was on Martha's Vineyard originally. Most of the time I spend in Boston, though. I like spend a very limited amount of time on, in Martha's Vineyard. I did not like Martha's Vineyard that much. Uh, it was just kind of secluded away from everything, and there's nothing to do during the winter. During the summer, there's like a lot of uh, things to go on going on, but in the winter, there's like literally nothing. So I would recommend if you guys are in a small city or if you're in a small place and you have the means to do it, I would highly encourage you guys to test out different places and see uh, what life is like there. Really, really nice to uh, experience new places and be a part of that, you know? Anyway. I would love to play against people that didn't do this, but like very low skill players will spam all their stuff at the river and get very lucky. That is extremely obnoxious. Because there wasn't too much I could have done there, I think, given my starting hand and everything. Sometimes... uh. People just want to all in and hope that they win, so it's kind of obnoxious, but it is it is part of the game. But now, since he doesn't have tornado, we can drop our miner here and then go guards. But this is like really unfortunate. I hope he doesn't bowler. Okay, we just lose. Uh, this is not supposed to happen. This was supposed to be a W, but of course he all end at the very start of the match before we were able to adjust our card cycle and get the elixir that we needed to defend. So we are in a horrendous position, my dudes. We are going to go in for a Mortar. He'll probably drop something on this. So let's go for a Little Prince. You can maybe click the ability here. Or Ice Spirit is fine. A 
With the Electro Dragon down, I feel like he's probably not going to do that. Uh, nah, he's probably going to do something dumb. I feel like a lot of times people just spam at the river randomly. Again, like even with a Lumberjack out of cycle, like with a balloon. Fortunately for us, we do end up having a decent defense. Uh, so like we can still go in for this. We can counter and pull the balloon. Then we can Miner here. And this might allow us to do a lot of damage. Maybe. Like the Goblin's actually not getting targeted by the Bowler, which is huge. I think we do take Tower. So thankfully, like despite him... It, despite his best attempt to throw the game for us, we're still in an okay spot. We might be able to kill everything. I hope he tries to, like, do something dumb. Oh, he's actually... He's, going, he's getting after it pretty hard. That should take my tower, which is unfortunate, but like, I mean, I kind of accepted that would happen, to be honest. That's why I started spamming. But yeah, sometimes people like, I, I don't know, man, they just spam stuff at the river, they get a little bit lucky, and then you can make comebacks. If I was a bit higher rank, I would have actually lost this game, because there's really, there, I shouldn't have been able to win this um, based off of the amount of damage you got early, but did not play very well, so we do win this. Can I hit the tower? Ah, oh, that would have been so clean. He's gonna do the exact same thing. He's gonna run it back. Don't even, don't even fib, guys. You know he's gonna run it back. <laughs> you already know he's gonna run it back with the, the freeze and just spamming everything he possibly can. So get ready for that. Go poison. You do want to kill this electro dragon, ideally. Notice how I separate my stuff because I really did not feel like losing today. And we stand on business with the Minor Poison and win the game. GG. Amazing. So even if you lose a million damage to someone all in you at the start, the great thing about this deck is <laughs> it can still let you win. It's a, it's a cool concept being able to spam more revolutions and have comeback potential because most Minor Poison decks do not have that. But yeah, again, like this guy's rank is like top 10,000. Um, he should not be beating me um, ever, really, if I play like one of my main decks. But sometimes what happens is this this is the strategy that they do they will literally just spam 10 worth of elixir at the very start of the match and they will do a million damage and it just doesn't it doesn't feel good so definitely one of my least favorite things to happen in clash royale is this because you look at it and you're like just he just went all in he really he, he was really out there with the uh the men's bridge spam strategy obviously uh, i don't think i could have done much more than what i did uh unfortunately the ice spirit did get punished Maybe the Ice Spear could have been in a different spot. I really didn't expect him to freeze that, so if he could have done anything different, I would have dropped an Ice Spear in a different spot. But look, look, my entire tower is dead. My entire tower is in shambles at 300 HP. We still came back and won, but man, I guess I, I got to play a little bit safer um, when I'm pushing up uh, because sometimes, like the earlier earlier parts of the game, they can cause you uh, they can cause you losses. Two truths and one lie. Ooh, dude, this sounds like a dating profile. <laughs> um. Yes, uh, I don't know, man. Two truths and one lie is always a spicy thing, man. Uh, all right, let's think about it. Let's think about it. So, I played in the Junior U.S. Open for tennis. I took some French in high school for two years. And thirdly, I... Hmm, I love pineapple and pizza. All right, those are my three. What do, what do you guys think is the truth and what do you think is a lie? Well, I guess there's uh, two truths and one lie. The last one is a lie? You think, you think I don't like pineapple on pizza? Is that you actually think that's the lie out of all three of those? My dude, you're wildin'. You are wildin'. Also, this is a free win, I'm pretty sure. I don't think this guy beats me. Um, I think we just poison on defense and everything dies. Like 90% sure poison kills everything. So the number one thing to realize is if you want to play this at a higher level, you never, 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 never let your little prince get hit. Because uh, that happens. That, that, that really sucks when that happens. Also, poisoning on defense allows us to defend this a lot more effectively. Obviously, the lava pups are a nuisance, but whatever. Pineapple and pizza is a lie? You guys, you guys are wilding. Why did no one pick... The Junior U.S. Open for tennis. Do you guys actually think I'm that talented at tennis? Like, what the heck? You guys literally picked the easy ones. 
And you're... What? Y'all y'all really think I played in the Junior US Open for tennis? You guys are crazy. Crazy, man. The French? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, the tennis one was a lie. I love... I like pineapple on pizza when it's grocery store pizza. Because, like, actual, like, homemade pizza, like, or, sorry, not homemade pizza, but, like, really fancy and nice pizza, I will not tarnish it with pineapple, because pineapple would, like, kind of, it's disrespectful. Disrespectful to the Italian roots that I have. But, for the most part, um, it's fine. Grocery store pizza, I, I love pineapple on it. Alright, we do want to be melting this, uh, so the poison can start cleaning up. We can easily go in for a mortar here to go and pull the balloon. And then we just go minions, and then his entire push is dead, and we just look at him, and we're like, Well, sir, this did not work out very well for you, sir. Sir, you're dead, sir. But yeah, he's not going to have a good time. He is not an enjoyer of this experience. So everything should be dead. I think we can go in for minor plus guards on the right-hand side, just to force more elixir there, since he's kind of in a bad spot, to be honest. EBH. I think we just eat everything and then go minions. Probably arrows this, it doesn't really matter. GG, I win. Amazing. Huh? Amazing. Unless you somehow do the Inferno Dragon teleport teleportation technique on my tower. But usually what you do in that matchup is just use your mortar in the same side as the uh Lava Hound to pull the balloon. And then you dissect the balloon with either poison um, after the lava pups pop. So like you kill the lava hound really quickly with your little prince and then you poison on all their supporting cards depending on what happens. But most of the time the, the proper technique is little prince as fast as you possibly can on top of the lava hound, have it secluded so it doesn't get fireballed and killed by a miner. Um, and then after that, you just poison on all their support cards and watch their entire push evaporate. It's really easy. That matchup is kind of free. It's kind of 100-0. You should never really lose it. Um, yeah, I like it. I, I'm an enjoyer of that matchup for sure. So we're going to go for a little Prince here. I think that the bandit will die. Uh, it should die in one more shot from the tower if we get that. That's nice. I'm going to click the ability here. If we can kill the ghost, that'd be huge. And that's exactly what happens. He just used a small spell. So let's go guards. This might just win us the game, actually. I think he might be dead. Mm, did he hit the magic archer? Nope. He's dead. He's kind of just dead. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. So, did you get a haircut? Yeah, yeah, I got a haircut. Um, I got it, like, a couple days ago. Or actually, yeah, two days ago. Thank you for noticing. Would you sell your leg for $1 billion? Uh, <laughs> Probably. I mean, you could do a lot of... I mean, $1 billion, that's like, uh, you could do a lot of good things for the world, man. I would uh, probably try to change the world with that $1 billion. If I was a billionaire, I'd be able to do a lot of good things. Um, but, that's like... Uh, <laughs> I... I probably wouldn't do it for, like, millions of dollars. It would have to be something absurd like that. Because I do really value my mobility and exercise and tennis, and it'd be way harder for me to do that. Okay, so let's just go minions and ice spirit. There's going to be four elixir, but it's probably worth it. I just don't... Ah, did I even need... I mean, we're just going to go for a minor here on defense against the ghost. Against bridge band players, again, this matchup is not great. You kind of rather end up having a uh, princess tower. Also against Expo, it's really annoying, but it's not really an Expo deck, so we're fine. I only watch Tag cry and complain when he loses. Really? Wow, I guess uh, I guess you're not really an enjoyer of the game, dude. Um, generally, like whenever I play games, I am pretty realistic about losses. Uh, I think on this stream, I told you guys why I lost. I showed examples of, hey, I wish I didn't go for recruits in the back in this very specific example. I showed why. Um, but yeah, dude, um, I don't know. Sometimes, uh, one thing that I, I watched a Ludwig thing today, uh, like, I, I, I think he made a, a, a video on, like, streaming in general, and how, um, generally, like, once you get to a certain size, you'll always have people just hate regardless, or just say things that aren't necessarily true, just based off of, like, hey, um, they just, they don't have anything else going on, so they just kind of do that. There's going to be, a, like, with, when you have lots of people watching, there's always going to be one or two people that are like that. So, uh, I'm proud that you're one of those two people, man. Appreciate you being here. Um, we can go for Little Prince. Or we can just go Guards. We'll go Guards here. We'll do this. Yeah. Let's do it this. Probably a Log. Nice. All right, all right. 
but yeah. Oh, uh, we'll go Mortar here, and we will go Guards. All right, unfortunately for him, he is not breaking through here, and we will win. This is GG. The cool thing about the Mortar Evo is how much damage it does. Like, it's kind of crazy in my opinion. I don't think it's very fair or balanced, but we'll take it. He'll lose everything, and then we can go for Poisons with Miner and throw a lot of stuff at him, and he's just dead, so it be a win. I mean, he's probably going to spam into us, but in reality, it's not really going to work. Could just lose all this stuff, and then also, I think that the Mortar has a likelihood of even locking Tower, which is kind of crazy if you're asking me. I'm going to eat the Ghost because it doesn't matter. Poison does 320, so we do win this right off the Poison. GG. Best deck for mid-ladder? Uh, the deck that I'm showing right now is pretty freaking good. Hello, 27-year-old uh, Italian here as well. Hey, let's go, dude. What cut is it? Looks like the DiCaprio one. It's definitely not the DiCaprio one. Right now, it's uh, it's kind of scuffed because I just woke up and I didn't do my hair at all. <laughs> Are you friends with Sundy? Yeah, I like Sundy. I like Sundy a lot. He's a really, really good guy. Um, You ever used to play WoW? Yeah, my friends made me play WoW. My friends made me play WoW. <laughs> Shout out to Mikey and Sean for getting me to play. I was playing StarCraft 2 with them, and they're like, dude, play WoW with us. I was like, ah, oh, okay, fine, maybe. All right. So, yeah, here we are. Did Riley, uh, did you tell Riley you regretted going to college? Uh, I told Riley I regretted going to Bentley. Um, Bentley is not that good of a school. I should have went to UPenn, and I didn't. So, I'm really intelligent. <laughs> Kappa. Uh, yeah, I did, I did some stupid stuff sometimes. Like, um... I think picking a school specifically based off of a school that you can go play tennis at is a very dumb decision. I would not recommend doing that to anyone. Uh, go to the better school. Don't go to the school that you can play sports at uh, because after you're done with sports, guess what? You have to uh, adult and adulting is a little bit more challenging if you don't have the best degree that you could possibly have. Or maybe like you go to a school that you're not very challenged at. Uh, yeah, so uh, that was probably one of my worst decisions in life. So I told Riley that I really, really did not like that. Um, also, uh, the, the, for me, um, I took a leave of absence in school. The reason why I did that is because it was actually um, very bad for me to go to college at a certain point when it was really stopping the potential of my cre creating content. Like, my content was actually awful. I don't know if you guys remember this. Um, there's people that will say that my content is good regardless, but it was it was terrible my content sucked um it was like two to three years ago it was just terrible content like the memes were bad there's a lot of issues with it um i was editing my own videos i was editing my own videos my my videos when i edited it before i started to hire actual editors um that yeah it just wasn't it wasn't it i was spending time editing my own videos before um for school and my content just sucked I'm sure you guys can remember that but if, uh, if you didn't watch it before, you'll just have to trust me. Or you can go back and watch. <laughs> uh, it, was not, it was not good. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very proud of the content that we released right now, but content before was not great. Also, we're just casually destroying everyone. Like, what the heck? I'm not even trying right now, and we are winning in the first two minutes. Amazing. Yeah, we do win these. Start from the bottom, now we're here. Yes, sir. I mean, we're going to keep pushing up to like top 2,000-ish. I don't know. Can I leave? Or nah? Nah, he's still here. Fireball Log probably isn't the play for him. Took the ability on the right-hand side. He's down a lot of Elixir. He just loses the uh, bats, and then I'm pretty sure he, like, he has to overcommit on defense here, too. Little Ice Spirit on these. They're all dead. Nice. Evo Mortar about to hit 1k. Dude, Evo Mortar is pretty broken. Not gonna lie. It's actually, um... So, I genuinely think that the Mortar Evo is one of the best Evos in the game if Bowler wasn't in every deck. Because Bowler is in every deck, then, you know, that's kind of unfortunate. Should I stop playing CR? Uh, I've been playing since release. I'm 44. Your age doesn't matter, man. That, that, that has nothing to do with uh, what's going on. Also, I just misclicked really hard, but... Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know why you give me your age <laughs> there. Uh, play what you enjoy, no matter how old you are. Play video games the rest of your life. If it's uh, not impacting the rest of your life, you know, if it's not hurting your relationship with your family, your family, your friends, or whatever. But I mean, dude, I don't know your uh, your situation. Like, you could say, "Hey, Jake, I'm 44, and I play one hour a day, and I really like playing the game, and it's a nice, relaxing thing that I do in my free time." Or you could be like, "Jake, I'm 44. I don't have a job, and I play Clash Royale eight hours a day." 
and it hurts everything because I'm addicted to this game. Whenever I lose the eagle, I throw my phone down in despair. Whenever I am getting talked to when I'm playing, I snap at people because I play this game too much. I lose my, all my hair because I'm stressed out all the time. Like, oh, dude, I don't know, man. I'm just taking like two extreme examples, but yeah, the, the, I, I have no idea. Play games that you enjoy as long as they're not impacting your life. That's what I could tell you. I loved your brick wall background content. Yay, dude, that was from Boston. That was uh, when I was editing my own videos. Married with two children. That's cool, man. Congratulations. Children are hard to manage. There is no doubt about that. I um, <laughs> I was driving back from uh, shopping yesterday and I saw some dude like in Seattle. It was rainy and stuff. And he, uh, he was carrying a stroller and all of the stuff from uh, like the stroller was just falling out and it was rainy. I was like, man, I, I feel like that is miserable. I do not know how he does that. Just uh, chugging along with the stroller in, in the in the rain and having to protect his kid at the same time. I'm just like, oh my goodness. I cannot imagine doing that. At least right now. I do not know when I will have kids, if I will have kids, what will happen there. But I feel like if you are not ready to have kids and you have kids, it is a horrible experience. So for me, I need to be pr properly prepared, you know. Um, unlike, you know. Clash Royale just throwing us a level 15. We don't want to be that level of prepared. We want to be want to like have notice, you know? We want to we want to know what's going on. Also, how are we matching to Royal Hogs every game? Do these guys play any other decks? Do they understand that there are other things? There's diversity in Clash Royale sometimes, maybe? I don't know, man. I feel like this guy's going to click a delivery on this, and then he's going to go for an Archer Queen in the back, and then it's going to get poisoned, and he's just going to look at himself. He's going to be like, why did I do that to myself? Probably drop an Archer Queen to the right-hand side, if I had to guess. Amazing. It's almost as if you're doing exactly what I'm expecting. So, we're going to try to go for guards here, and we might be able to do some nice damage. I want an Ice Spirit on top of the Queen. If you guys are unfamiliar with his interaction, it is a very fun interaction. We're actually going to go in for an Ice Spirit and a Log. Please die, Queen. Please die, Queen. No one loves you, Queen. No one loves you. No one loves you. Stop it. All right, cool. You're dead, finally. <sighs> that sucks. I hate that interaction. Um, I might have to go for little points plus the ability. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I think that's probably the play. Kill the pigs. I know. All right. Well, we're gonna mortar on the other side and see how this goes. I don't think you can archer queen. An earthquake. Like log. Ooh, ooh, amazing. I can't believe you dropped your delivery. That is your one card to counter the minions. It's almost as if you did not identify that that was a card that you needed to save. GG. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's kind of funny. When that happens, I just look at it and I'm like, thank you for the win. I appreciate the donation of the medals. So, um, in this matchup, the key is using your minions on defense. When your opponent doesn't have a way of killing the minions, the minions kind of kill everything. The only way that he can kill the minions is the Royal Delivery. So if he doesn't have that, he will not win the game. So the Royal Delivery can't teleport on the minions. The minions kind of kill most of his stuff. Ice Spirit is phenomenal against Archer Queen. If you can get the Ice Spirit to connect, connect to the Archer Queen, then uh, the Archer Queen just dies, and then they click the ability, and you laugh at them. And you're like, why'd you click the ability? The Archer Queen's going to die for one elixir. You spent six. Thank you so much. It's pretty fun. Anyway, it doesn't happen all the time. You think you can beat Ian 7 7? Yes, I can beat any player in the entire world. I can beat Ian, I can beat Muhammad Light, I can beat Boss, I can beat anyone. Are they better than me? Yes, they are better than me. So it doesn't really matter. If I've beaten everyone in the game pretty much, yes. Uh, at a certain skill level, there is no one that I cannot beat. Um, that's just kind of how Clash Royale is. Um, also, at a certain skill level, there are a ton of you guys that can beat me that might not think that you can beat me. Because guess what? It's a card game, there's some RNG components. You guys remember how I lost to the person that uh, ran Sparky in the back? I did the high probability play of dropping the recruits, but there was nothing I could do because he dropped a Sparky in the back and I died. There's those type of situations where I can Sparky in the back against Ian and maybe he doesn't have the right card cycle. Maybe he just automatically loses. Maybe he doesn't play a perfect game and I do and I beat him. That's the type of thing that Clash Royale has. You know, like you can ask any pro player um, they lose to people a lot worse than them. They beat people a lot, a lot better than them too sometimes. I'll keep going until you notice my last two messages. messages. Tag Senpai. Dude, thank you so much for the donos. Uh, I'm sorry that I did not see them earlier. Appreciate, appreciate the donos. Anyway, we are in a pretty bad spot. Executioner is a hard counter. I missed a cool dono. Oh, there are some other ones that I, I missed as well. Yeah, I'll read those. 
Hey, Sir Tag, me and my girlfriend love watching you, says Felix. And then he donated more. Dude, Felix, I feel like if I am a bad streamer and I don't acknowledge the message, I feel like I don't deserve more money. I feel like I need to start donating to you, man. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> why does why does the trash streamer get more money? The trash streamer does not deserve more money. When, when I don't read things, I don't deserve more money. <laughs> Thank you, though. I, I really do appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. Kind of a funny concept, though, right? Don't you guys feel that? Or nah? Is it kind of ridiculous? All right, Little Prince, just kill, right? Yeah. We did have to waste the Evo, but whatever. Doesn't even matter. All right. Let's log on the Executioner or the Knight and kill the Skellies. That's decent. All right, we are, we're, we're out here. We're out here. We're chilling. We're vibing. We're thriving. All right, I think he can't Executioner me, so maybe I should have minions. But it's Ike. Does he? There's no way he exits this, right? There's no way. Oh, he has Elixir. I am in shambles. I am in shambles. It's okay. It's fine. It's always calculated out here by Deuterinos. Wait, was that a good ability? Oh, it was a sick ability. Oh, I was questioning the ability. I was a doubter. And now this guy is probably a powder. This is ridiculous. Oh, please. Please. Yes! Let's freaking go! Get finessed, my bro. Get finessed, my dude. Oh my goodness. Imagine the mortar staying on your tower like a leech. Sucking everything from existence. Could not be me, my dude. Oh, that, that really sucks. Alright, we win. GG. It's a light work. There's no way I lose this, right? There's no shot. I just I just do one of these, and I do one of those, and I do one of these. And then he probably dies to a poison, so. Right? How much damage does a poison do? I don't know. It doesn't really matter, though. Cool. What do you think about one cycle Evo Bomber? I feel like Clash Royale didn't play their game if they think that that's fair and balanced, but. <laughs> Who knows, man? Who knows? Uh, I, I, I do love the Clash Royale guys. I just wish they had one person that hit like the highest rank possible, like top 200 or like top 1000. I just, I wish they had like a couple people on their team that did that. Like that's, that's all I'm asking for at one point or like a really high rank. Cause like I look at TFT, which is another game that I play and I see Mortdog and Mortdog hit challenger, I think, or like grandmaster or whatever. Like generally all the balances that they do make sense all the time. But Clash Royale, there's just like, some balance changes or some decisions that are just so outlandish that I look at and I'm like, how did you come up with this? Are you trying to milk us with the money or are you guys just that off base? I don't understand. And, and the bomber is very off base. A two elixir cost card, one elixir cycle or one cycle. It's just dumb. It's a bad thing. You know, it's not it. It's not it. Yo, Felix with a $20 dono. Finally noticed me. You're so wholesome. Uh, dude, thank you. I feel like I'm moderately wholesome. I don't think I'm super wholesome. I think I'm moderately wholesome, my dude. Um, I was hoping that one day I can face against you in rank ladder. Uh, look out for me, Skeleton Lord. I will be looking out for you. I'm also scared of Skeleton Kings, so don't do that to me, please. I'm not, I'm not ready for this world if you are <laughs> going to Skeleton King me. Also, are these minions going to win me the game? Because he doesn't have a good card cycle. I knew that he had cycled Skeleton Dragon, so I was like... Hopefully he just loses. I don't know. We'll see. Also, we can do this. And when he miners, we guards. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I'm allergic to losing to Lob Hounds, if you guys are unaware. Kind of a kind of a cool concept. Also, it's, it's kind of sucky the little prince uh stops moving. Or it starts moving again after it kills. I don't like that. Please! Yes! Alright, guys. I'm I'm sorry that I keep screaming please every five seconds, but. Please don't let me lose to this Inferno Dragon. Please die. Oh my god. That's brutal. I have to Ice Spirit. That's fine. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter, my guys. Alright, we can go for this. And the Skeleton Dragons will just get two tapped. And then the Mortar's going to force out more Elixir. And then he'll probably go Balloon in the left-hand side right into a Minions. Wow, he's going to four Elixir Fireball. Take a bad trade and take damage. Remember last time what he did, he decided that it was the right play to go for Barbarian. So I bet you he goes Evo Barbs on this. 
I should have waited for a ton elixir because he would have lava hounded and he wouldn't have had elixir for everything. Oh, arrows. Arbs, please. I mean, we made it out the arrows, so this is probably pretty good. He's going to have to barbs. Oh, he's got guards. I forgot. Oh, it's too early in the morning, man. It's too early in the morning. Luckily, I'm still allergic to losing the lava hound. All right. So we just go for the little prince here. He'll probably Inferno Dragon this. We have reset with Ice Spirit. He doesn't have arrows back in cycle, so he's probably just in a bad spot. EBH. He's probably going to go for uh, Inferno Dragon into the Little Prince, so let's just do this. He's in a really bad cycle. He's probably just dead, honestly. Not even going to fit. It's too easy sometimes. Yup, GG. I was the most desperate Lava Hound I've seen in my life. I'm not going to lie. That was pretty funny. Got a Miner, so we'll go Guards, and we'll Poison. Oh. Be honest, did not expect that. Uh, Ice Spirit's hilarious because it's going to force out barbs or guards in front of the tower. And then he has nothing for the miner. <laughs> but when you've played decks enough, uh, once you reach a certain skill level, you know exactly what your opponent's going to draw because they have a finite amount of answers to your specific cards. And then you don't go in for your miner if you know that they're going to drop a mini P.E.K.K.A. or a knight or an Ice Spirit, right? You, you go in for the miner when you know that you're going to get damage. And that's generally like what I like to do. So we've... Not really lost many games. I did lose one game. I guess this guy did outplay me, but it's very far and few in between players that will like play better um, once you've mastered a deck. You just play this one deck like a million times and then you'll win a lot. So you have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Out of nineteen games with that one deck, I have won eighteen of them. Which is pretty cool. That was a pretty good win rate. We take those. So I would highly encourage you guys to play this minor poison deck. It is one of the best decks in the game, and we are grinding out here. It is super, super strong. Audio delayed. Thank you for letting me know. I'll fix it right quick. If the audio has been delayed for a while, I'm very sorry. All right, should be fixed now. Let me know if it's not fixed. Thank you so much for letting me know. Okay, another low skill strategy with a Balloon Lumberjack, probably. Uh, this is one of the few decks that I do lose to sometimes, not all the time, but I don't like playing against it because a lot of times people Lumberjack Balloon freeze and then they get an advantage and then I lose. So I just want to play this match a little bit slower at the start so I can guarantee that I beat him. Um, really don't like losing to this deck. Out of all the decks in Clash Royale, this is definitely at like the top of the charts for my most hated list. It's fixed now? Yeah, dude. Thank you. This guy has donated $37? Yeah, man. We uh, we have $32 in revenue so far today. Not $37 today, I think, but yeah, we're killing it. We're doing pretty well. I appreciate all the support. If you guys don't already know, all the money that I get from donations goes directly back into the channel, so my editing costs are going to be uh, covered by that, and we are able to create better videos because of you guys. So thank you. Uh, mostly sponsorships, but also donations go a long way. Creator code and... Um, Sponsorships are the main ways I'm able to afford my content. Without the creator code and without sponsorships, uh, we would not have as good of videos as we have right now. How do you get the books of books? Because I am an OG player and I played, uh, I paid for Passerelle a long, long time ago. All right, so this might take his entire tower if he doesn't go goblins, but he's gonna drop goblins late, right? Oh, wait, watch this, guys. This is so fun. Look at the Lumberjack. Look at his high HP. We're going to go Ice Spirit here to go and pull it back. It just dies. It dies to just an Ice Spirit because the uh, stupid tower is so broken. Like, it also kills Mini P.E.K.K.A., by the way. If you guys are unaware, it does actually fully counter a Mini P.E.K.K.A., which is really ridiculous, if you're asking me. Like, you can counter a Mini P.E.K.K.A. with just an Ice Spirit in your tower, which is not an interaction that used to happen. All right, we're standing on business here, shutting down his stuff. Look with the ability. Knock back the Lumberjack. Still have a tank for the Mortar. Might as well drop another one and just win the game. Because it's sometimes just that easy. Alright, so one strategy that I like to do is I really, really am an enjoyer of going in for minions here. The reason why I like dropping the minions is if he clicks the ability, he drops the ability right into minions and the minions kind of counter everything. The guards will lock tower. That's like 700 damage. Kind of crazy to think about that it does that amount. Well, so this is desperation and it's pinnacle. Um, dropping a balloon like that is not going to work. 
We're gonna stop the Lumberjack from crossing the river and he's just gonna lose the game. Amazing. I'm gonna minor here. And we'll Ice Spirit. And we could pre-log, but I don't even care. It doesn't even matter. Order, nah, screw it. Let's minor poison him. Oh, that actually targeted what we needed it to. That's pretty beautiful. Wait, do I lose? Uh, I think... I mean, my tower's really low. So, not a huge fan of what happened there, but whatever. I kind of screwed around with the minor poison, thinking I could just win a little bit faster, but should have played safer. That's the reason why, why Balloon Freeze decks are super gimmicky. You can be just spamming stuff at the river and just get a million damage. Mooyahoo! Hey! <laughs> Thank you, man. Do you also do cardio every day at the gym? No, I do cardio with tennis and walking around cities and exploring it. So I don't really get my cardio from like actual cardio from there. My deck consists of skeleton, Evo Skeletons, Skeleton, Skeleton King, Skeleton Dragon, Skeleton Army, Skeleton Barrel, Graveyard, Mirror, Clone. Also me and my girlfriend use Creator Codes to tag. I forced her to. I respect the decisions. I respect the decisions. Oh man, you have a spooky deck for sure. Looking dapper, my dude. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. What is the best deck with Sparky? Uh, Sparky Goblin Giant is probably the best deck. There's a whole bunch of Sparky decks on my YouTube channel. Type in Sir Tag Sparky and they will come up. I could also Mortar here, but I've already dropped a billion Elixir. Oh! Oh, that is painful! Imagine zapping and not killing and getting that Mortar or the Hog Rider hit. That, that, that's rough, man. That's rough, buddy. That is not a good feeling. I, uh, I, I think that's just, uh, that's kind of brutal. All right, he's going to drop something heavy on this. Knock it back, maybe. Oof, oof, that's brutal. Everything is going wrong for my homie here, and I, I like it. I am an enjoyer of this experience for, uh, for us. So I'm going to Ice Spear and pull back the barbs. Guards here. I hope the, guard, the barbs just die in one shot, right? Ah, oh, they got a hit on my tower. That sucks. All right. Well, that's kind of dumb. I don't think I should have went on the right-hand side, but <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Doesn't even matter. All right. So we'll go for Little Prince in the back, and we'll see what happens. Audio. I'm sorry about the audio, guys. We'll fix it real quick. Turning off the audio. That's how we fix it. Is this a Mega Knight deck? It has to be, right? I actually don't understand what this deck is, but I don't like it. If the Ice Spirit didn't hit the Prince, I think we were dead. Because the Poison needs to kill, and it does, finally. Alright, remember, <laughs> the guy <laughs> ambitiously drops a Hog Rider with everything, and then tries to all-in me, so... We'll just stand on business, kill that, and be fine with the Zap. It doesn't even matter, everything dies... Yeah, fine. So I want to be cycling more mortars. I don't know why I keep spamming good game. I know I'm going to win, but you don't have to keep saying it. Let it play out, bro. Let the movie unfold. All right. Not ideal, but whatever. Oh my gosh, he's vicious out here with the, the spam. He's, he's out here. He's killing it. This is one of the weirdest and wackiest decks I've played against. There's literally a prince with the barbarians. Dude, even at 2,000 in the world, people are running crazy decks. What? Excuse moi Oh, no, that was a bad minor. Oh, it was, it was actually a little bit of finesse. A little bit of finesse, actually. A little bit... A little itty bitty bit about a bit of finesse. All right, we're gonna use our mortar here. It should lock onto spear goblins and stuff. That hits tower now, so he's gonna fireball it. Oops. Eh, that's fine. We'll probably get barbs or minions. Because he doesn't have fireball in cycle, it's definitely advantageous for me to go little prince instead of dropping a poison. I could have poisoned on the minions, but I'd rather Little Prince because he doesn't have any way of punishing this for like a couple cards, at least. 
Now he's two cards away from Fireball. It's just minions here. That's probably log on everything. A spirit's pretty strong. As long as it doesn't get stupid and jump onto the Barbarian. Like, only the Barbarian. Oops. Might have messed this one up a little bit, Chief. Yeah, that's free poison, so I have to take that. That's just a bad, that's just bad gameplay on his end. All right, also really bad gameplay if I decide to spam into that because like obviously I just want to defend this and win the game. <laughs> this is a decent mortar. I start poisoning him whenever I want. The cool thing about this deck is it just beats all of the bad decks in the game. If someone is running a deck that doesn't make sense, they will lose because their cards just aren't synergistically very strong compared to yours you win and that's kind of the cool concept that i like with the deck um i do like winning uh, it's a fun experience and can't recommend it enough he's gonna try to poison he's gonna fireball it's not gonna do enough so use this he's got rocket i don't i don't think he does but yeah pretty easy win we'll continue the climb you can't hear the game yeah of course you can't hear the game because there was a static audio so i remove the game sound and then the game sound goes back after i win the game <laughs> Is. I don't want to hurt everyone's ears. Also, if you guys are enjoying this live ladder pushing, if you guys enjoy me, instead of creating videos, if you guys enjoy all this live on stream, if you enjoy me just popping off and winning all the games or just trying to push up from scratch, like if I haven't played a lot of games, if you guys enjoy this, make sure to drop a like on the video. It goes a long way. It supports me for free and allows me to do this more often. So I know there's a lot of you guys watching right now. If you do like it, definitely subscribe, but most importantly, like the video. All right, all right. I love pushing ladder. Yes, sir. Is Cannoneer a new meta? Uh, Cannoneer works really well with this deck. How do you win every game? Uh, I'm just a bit better than most of the people I'm playing against because my rank is generally a little bit higher than this. I haven't played in a while, so it makes me look a lot better. Like, that's just, I'm just going to be honest. Like, it makes me look better when I'm playing against people that I'm better than. But if I'm at like top 1,000 at the end of the season, I will like alternate win and loss the entire time. So um, don't get it twisted. I'm not one of the best players in the world. Um, I just am better than the people I'm playing against. So it looks like I'm a lot better than I am. Just wanted to let you guys know that. <laughs> okay. But yeah, the deck that I'm playing is also very consistent as well. So there's a lot of different things that are helping me out. Waiting for a Golem deck? Thank you, dude. Golem is awesome. I love seeing that you like Golem. There are actually some good Golem decks. There's a Golem Battle Healer deck. Type in Sir Tag Golem Battle Healer. It'll pop up. I remember when Sundy gifted you a lot of subs? Yeah, he did. Ian is a great guy. He really is, truly. Any viable meme deck? Uh, I'll try to have some meme decks later. I'll try to have some meme decks later. All right, minions are just dead, so that's fine. Archer will also die here. I can go for minor plus guards, but kind of rather go and drop minions because he just uses archers, so I feel like he might have to fireball this. Yeah, he might have just lost. I don't know what he's going to do. I think he just didn't play well. No, he didn't play very well, did he? Kind of what we expected from Sparky players, not going to lie. He's going to drop a Goblin Giant in front of this, so we want to go and cycle to our Mortar and then probably just hit the Sparky with that and then Ice Spirit. Yeah, let's just Ice Spirit this. The guards around. It's okay if we get one shot on our tower. It doesn't really matter that much as long as we don't lose. And we win. Amazing. He's a sparky player that just kind of all ins. Um, this is what you'll find a lot on ladder. They're not a very uh, rare species. This is a very common species of Pokemon where they drop all their stuff at the river and they hope that they win. Um, it's not necessarily the most intelligent species of Pokemon, but it is populating ladder like nobody's business. Like if you go to Route 5, this is the only type of Pokemon you'll be catching. I swear, guys. Like, root 5,000 trophies on ladder, this is where it is. If uh, if you hit Ultimate Champion for the first time, they'll just spam all their stuff, whether it's Recruits or Sparky. So generally for me, what I like to do is I like just playing defensive decks where I can almost guarantee the win. Can't always guarantee it, but we're out here. We go Ice Spirits and the Sparky shoots that. And the guards afterward. And... I think that we're fine with a minor on defense against the mini Taka. 
I don't even know if I needed that, to be honest. I just wanted to guarantee we don't lose. And we beat him. Amazing. As you can see, another free win. We will jump on to the next one. I think we'll probably stop around top 2,000 in the world. I don't know where that is, but I probably want to stop around top 2K. It's likely the strat. That's likely the play today. Let's go. Love how objective you are. No, I just, I, I mean, you got to be honest with yourself and you got to be honest with your viewers. Otherwise, it's just like, it's disingenuous. And then, you know, you just, you don't feel good about yourself then, right? You got to feel good about yourself. You got to be honest with yourself you can, so you can improve. If you're not honest with yourself, you can't really like look at yourself and be like, oh, I can improve in this way or whatever, right? Like, or you're just going to waste time. Like, let's say I thought I was like the top 20 players in the world. Guess what? I'd be lying to myself and I'd be trying to push the top 20 the entire time. And I'd be like, I can do it. I can do it. I'm so good. And then when you never do it, you're just like, wow, I'm actually not that level. The cognitive dissonance is real for a lot of people that think they are way better than they actually are. For me, I just, I'm objective, I'm a top 1,000 player. Um, that's just my skill level. <laughs> Maybe I can hit higher, but until I prove that to myself, then, uh, then, yeah, I'll just, you know, I am where I am. I am where my ranks have shown myself the last couple of seasons. Sure, I hit 800 in the world last season, and I tilted down the last day, but, like, tw 15 minutes, I, I, I tilted down, uh, I think, 400 spots, which really sucked, but, hey, um... I didn't earn that. I didn't earn top 800. I earned top 1,000. That's where I should have been, but, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm stupid sometimes. Uh, all right, we're going to go for minions or we're going to go minor. What else can we do? This might be the last game for top 2,000 in the world, by the way. He's going to fireball and miss the minions. So that's huge. Um, generally, against Little Prince, we are okay dropping the Ice Spirit as well if he doesn't click the ability, but he is a Goblin Giant player, so a lot of these players just don't do really dumb decisions. If you are better at the game, you do not click the ability when you're down Elixir. It's just not a good decision. If you're down Elixir and you click the ability, then you're wasting a lot of Elixir and you're stopping your cycle of evolutions. So this guy actually played intelligently, but he also netted a very negative trade, so it was good for us. This is also not a great matchup because if you look at it, he's going to have recruits and we don't have a tower that does very well into that. When you drop your... Ooh, did we lose? Yeah, he played that really well. It's like, I was actually super smart. We uh, yoinked our little prince with the fisherman, so I got to give him credit. Like... Even if he's running a low skill deck, like if they play well, I want to say well played because, you know, I respect good decisions. I respect good players. Um, He missed a fireball, but ooh, he missed a little prince too. Oops, well, he loses. Yeah, I guess we'll play one more game after this. Maybe not, though. Maybe we do lose. I mean, do we kill this little prince? That sucks. Not a huge fan of how much damage this is about to do to my tower. Goblin Giant is a very unfair card if you guys are unaware. All right, so we somehow have to just defend on the right-hand side for the rest of the game. I think that we are going to be able to do that. So let's just like Little Prince in the back because we want to get the three-card cycle rolling. We want to go in for mortars on defense here. And should be a solid W. We are crushing it. Uh, 1 to 1,000 is top 1,000. Uh, top 1,200 is just saying. Yeah, I could also say like that my rank is like top 200 or whatever, right? Because I have hit higher ranks. So I, I think I've been pretty generous with the, uh, with the ranking. Like... Also, I did, like, just to be honest, like, I did hit top 1,000 very, very easily. I was going for top 800, and then I lost. So that's, that's what happened. I did hit top 1,000 last season. My friends were like, just sit. And I'm like, no, I want to hit top 600 or top 800. So, yeah, if you were there, if you watched, if you checked my profile, then you would see. But you probably didn't. Um... Little Prince is a good deck at top ladder. Yeah, it's pretty good. Little Prince is very, very strong. Uh, 1v1 viewers? Oh, we're top 1,000. or top 2,000 now. 1,934. Wow, we did so well today. All right, one last game. Last game. Still doing rating viewer decks? Yeah, I'll do that later. I'll do that later for sure. Thank you for all the positivity. You're an amazing person, Jake. Thank you, dude. Uh, I don't know if I'm amazing, but I appreciate the, con the, uh, the, the niceness from you, sir. This guy is very good. That was a smart decision. Uh, terrible ability, though. That was trash. I don't know why he did that. Uh, that little prince range was perfect, but then he messed up, so kind of interesting. I'm going to try to pull that back so we don't have to spend as much elixir. Then we can go guards, not take any damage. All right, so he's probably running the Canario deck with recruits and Goblin Giant again. They're just running it back. These, these people all run the same stuff, I guess. In their DNA. I don't think this is a good ability, but let's find out. Nah, that's a pretty bad ability. 
I mean, I can kill this with minions, right? This is an Electro Giant deck, right? That has to be E-Giant. Oh, it's Giant Graveyard. Full skill, baby. I'm screwed. Alright, we're not dead, but this is really bad stuff. Oh, we finally got a bad matchup. Oh, no. Yeah, Graveyard is really, 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 really tough with this deck. It is what it is. You're going to kill the gym today? Dude, thank you. I appreciate that. Need that TFT content. Like, where are you, sir? Who would win, you or B-Rod? B-Rod's a better player than me. He just is. He's a really, really good player. B-Rod is exceptionally talented at this game. Like, out of all of the content creators, I think that B-Rod, the only reason he didn't do that well in CRL was just because of nerves. I think he was genuinely way more intelligent and way, 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 way more talented than most people in CRL. It's just unfortunate that he did not do well there. I think he could have done so much better professionally. Like, he just kind of got unlucky. Maybe I'm biased. You guys can call me biased, but I don't care. I, I, that's what I believe. I've seen B-Rad play a lot of Clash Royale. Alright, um... Can I, like, not lose this matchup, <laughs> please? I would really appreciate if you didn't have Bowler Graveyard into my Little Prince uh, Kenmir deck, but this is not great. This is not it, Chief. Also, the dude has uh, arrows for our minions, so... Look a little bit worse, honestly. Please, Graveyard, Giant Graveyard, me, right in the guards. Yes, thank you for doing that, sir. Appreciate the donation of the elixirs. Terrible Snowball, too. Did you actually get away with it? Got away with it with, if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Alright, I'm so dead. Yeah, this, this matchup is, is jokes. So I guess sometimes you do get bad matchups if into a good players. This guy is a pretty good player and he also got an amazing matchup, so I can't really do much here. Oh, Toby locked onto the tower. Yo, watch the boy shot hit my... Okay, get it. Ugh. Up! How about you don't do this right now? <laughs> How about we talk about what you're doing before you do it? You absolute animal. Can you please lose somehow? I, I don't think it's possible, but I would love for you to lose. Ah, stop it. <laughs> Stop it! Oh my god, what was that RNG? Did I miss the poison? I think I might have missed the poison. Ha, <laughs> we lose. GG. We'll, we'll end up one more win. Anaban would have won this matchup? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm not saying, like, this matchup is impossible or anything. I just did not get a good start. It's a tough one. It's a tough matchup. Always blaming the matchup when I'm losing. I lost one game! What? I'm honest about it. I'm honest about everything. I just... <laughs> All right, yeah, you guys are you guys are wilding. I, when people have been asking me if I'm worse than players that are other YouTubers, I've said the entire time like that I am worse than them when I actually feel that way. Ah, I don't know. I I don't know. I get trolled way too much by you guys sometimes. I don't know why I pay too much attention to it. All right, we're gonna poison here. I think we're fine. But yeah, I'm also not gonna be disingenuous and say like, hey, that's easy. All right, I've said at the very start before I even played games. What is Cannon near weak against? Graveyard. I was I said that, right? Did I did I not say that? If you want to go rewind, you can see that. Um, if you want to have cognitive dis dissonance and just be like troll, then I guess you can. But if you want to actually be a contributing member of this community, you can easily see that I said that at the very start of the stream. And I had said that I got matchup advantage in every single other matchup besides Graveyard um, and Bridge Band. Those are the two that I said at the very start. Did I play that? I did. I did play against a Graveyard deck. Did he also have Bowler for our Little Prince? He did. Did he have Arrows for our Minions? He did. Yeah, kind of unfortunate.
I'm not going to be disingenuous and say that that's easy because I also want you guys to know if you lose that one, don't feel terrible about yourself because there are some duff matchups in Clash Royale. Not every single matchup that you get with this deck is easy. I could be very disingenuous and I could win against that matchup and say, hey guys, it was so easy. And that would be like not very nice of me to do because then you guys would, if you lose it, you'd feel really bad and you'd be like, wow, Jake said this was easy. But I'd be lying to you. I try not to lie to myself. I try not to lie to you guys. And, you know, I think that's the best combo. Be honest as much as you can be. Okay, so we have a pretty good matchup here, I think. I do have to drop guards here on the, uh, the skeletons. Um, this musketeer is actually just dead. Which is a crazy concept to me. Or maybe not. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, this matchup is amazing for us, actually. Reason is, uh, he doesn't have a good way of killing minions, I believe. Ah, that was bad gameplay on my end, but it's fine. We'll go guards and minor. We we'll probably force out a lot of elixir here. Yeah, we're forcing Barbril and also a Bond Tower, which is huge. We're tanking for the minions for as long as possible. We are going to go for poison on the Musketeer. I think the Mortar even shoots the tower, which is massive. We're in a very advantageous position. We go guards on top of the uh, Barbrail, so then it targets that instead of the Mortar. Okay, this is kind of scuffed. Can we go minions, little Prince ability? We can go guards here. As you can see, this matchup is very much in my favor. Playing pretty well. Definitely playing against a good player as well. Poison was bad, but doesn't really matter that much. Trying to control the bridge. Guy seems very good at the game, by the way. For him to even get this like moderately close, like this is a super, super easy matchup for me. Like I'm just very impressed by his gameplay. The fact that he's making this semi-close. Probably go Barbro on top of this. Ooh, no, we still pull. But yeah, that mortar placement is phenomenal, as you guys can see, it's just so broken. I thought he would protect, he didn't. Because he doesn't know that Pokemon move yet. Not gonna click anything, he'll just go in for oh. Go guards, do this. Oh we drop a defensive mortar here. Go guards again. Go minions again. Can't kill them. Kind of a ridiculous concept to just be able to do this, but it is Clash Royale. Yeah. Part of the game. Poison. Minor log. Wow, this guy played so well to get to this stage. Super good player. What can I say besides phenomenal player? Look for another minor here. But yeah, this would be, I, I would think if I win this game, it's pay, it's purely based off matchup and it's not me being better than my opponent. I have to be honest with you. He stacked Musketeers incredibly well. He ended up not making many mistakes. I definitely was allowed to make more mistakes, just throw poisons whimsically on the map on defense. I won that purely based off matchup. So I would say most games with this deck, you will have matchup advantages. The only two that you will ever struggle against are Graveyard and Bridge Bam. And if you don't understand that, um... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe play a different deck. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, if you're playing against a lot of Bridge Bam decks, you could run Princess Tower. If you are playing against a lot of Graveyard decks, you could also run Princess Tower. Or you could just defend with Poisons and outplay your opponent and be a lot better than them. It is a lot harder to do to defend against Graveyard Splash Yard Baby Dragon, but primarily you're going to use your Little Prince ability to tank for your Little Prince, and then it will stop anything from targeting it onto your Little Prince. So when they have Evo Knight, it's going to be hard for you to defend because you don't have any good way of killing the Evo Knight besides like guards and guards will die to baby dragon. So if they go like Evo Knight baby dragon, you're really going to have to use the little prince ability to tank for your little prince. That's the best way of winning. And uh, yeah, it's not an easy matchup, but it is what it is. I never saw a prediction king like you. Uh, oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Han Kim. Thank you so much, Han Kim. Thank you for becoming a member. I love you, dude. Hell yeah. Tag, you're looking cute today. Dude, I appreciate that. Um, 
We could also do more games, but I think this is probably a good way to end. We ended up playing how many games? Let's see our win rate. What was our win rate with this deck when we started? So we started... Where are we at? All right, so we started here. 11 hours. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. 27 games with this deck. We only lost two. So 25 divided by 27 is a win ratio of, come on, give me the calculator. It's 92.5. So 93% win rate. I can even make a video on that. <laughs> but yeah, that's generally what I do. If you guys are wondering, how does Jake get a 93% win rate in his videos where he titles 93% win rate, 91% win rate? I usually play a ton of games and then I push up from low ladder to high ladder and then it looks like this. So now you guys get the behind the scenes of how I get the 93% win rates. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this stream. I love you so much. Have an amazing rest of your day. And uh, yeah, um, peace out Girl Scouts. Check out the YouTube channel link in the description of the videos if you want to. Actually, check out the pinned comment if you want to. Pinned comment uh, will show the easiest recruits Goblin Giant deck. And there's also a... Yeah, if you want a full video on the deck that we just played, if you are looking to understand this at a more molecular level, if you're really trying to get really good with this deck, I'll post a link about another full video with this deck in the pinned comment. And... The Goblin Giant deck that we played earlier, the really easy no-skill deck, that will also be in the pinned comment. So you can pick between high skill or low skill. This is the deck that I would recommend for everyone that's trying to push at the end of the season, that's trying to get better at Clash Royale. Because as you can see, 25 wins and only two losses is a pretty good win ratio. Um, very consistent deck. So check it out if you haven't already. Subscribe to this YouTube channel because I put out a daily video at 3 p.m. Eastern. And definitely like the video to support me for free because, you know, that's nice. You know, it supports me and it allows me to do more consistent videos and more commentary and, and more stuff in the future. Anyway, guys, I'll see you later. Peace out. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of your day.